When I came to write the novel, The Lady of the Rivers, about Jakarta, Duchess of Bedford, I very quickly realised that there was very, very little material directly about her. What there was was she appears in the sources and she appears in the accounts of the time, but very often as a footnote, or somebody will say that she's at an event. What I really needed was a biography about Jaquetta, and no one has written that. So it quickly became clear to me that if I was going to have to trace her through the history of the period, then I, would, then I might as well write that biography, which is in a sense missing. So I decided to write an essay, an extended essay, about the life of this extraordinary woman. She was born into the family of the Counts of Luxembourg, related to the Holy Roman Emperor, and indeed to the Kings of England. So she was very well born and she was married at a very young age to the John Duke of Bedford, the Regent of France. On his death, she married for love, an extraordinary choice, and married Richard Woodville, a squire of England, who brought her to England. And she rose high in the House of Lancaster and became uh, one of the leading ladies-in-waiting to Margaret of Anjou, and so was present throughout all the years of the Wars of the Roses, saw Margaret go into exile and their cause be defeated, and then, extraordinarily, saw her daughter marry the rising house, the House of York, Edward IV. It must have been very bitter for the two women when they met after the final defeat of the Lancasters and saw Margaret go into exile and Jaquetta become a leading lady again, but this time in the House of York. What fascinates me most about Lady Margaret Beaufort is she's a consummate political survivor and she fought like a tigress to put her son Henry Tudor on the throne as King Henry VII. And when I came to look at her life, most of what had been done on her was the Margaret after Henry was king, a saintly figure, a pious figure who was found in colleges and doing religious good deeds. What attracted me to her was a very different Margaret, a younger Margaret who fought in an age dominated by men who intrigued, who maneuvered to try and master the changing fluctuations of political fortune and fight for her son. And it was an extraordinary fight. One image dominated Margaret Beaufort's life, that of the wheel of fortune. It was a wheel where you could be at the top, enjoying power, influence, and then suddenly everything was taken away. I first became interested in Queen Elizabeth Woodville because she'd been so much criticised, both by contemporaries and by later generations, and I wanted to know if these allegations were really true. Uh, was she really as bad as she was painted? The fundamental problem was that she married Edward IV. Uh, medieval kings, of course, always married foreign princesses, but she was from a relatively humble background and she was one of his own subjects as well and people simply could not understand this. Uh, the only explanation they could come up with was that Edward's normally good judgment had been interfered with and that witchcraft must somehow be involved. And this was something, this was an allegation that was to follow Elizabeth um, all her life. Now, probably if that had been all there was to it, Edward and Elizabeth would have lived it down in time. But unfortunately, she had a very large family. She had five brothers and seven sisters, and they all had to be found positions and suitable marriage partners. I mean, no self-respecting medieval king uh, could leave his in-laws in relative poverty. And this meant that other noble families who would have received those benefits if the Woodvilles had not been around, did not do so. And so, of course, they resented them for that reason there was always the feeling that the Woodvilles were upstarts, that they did not deserve all that they'd received from the king. And yet, of course, really, they uh, were very loyal servants to Edward. And nobody ever criticised Elizabeth Woodville because she had failed in her duty or because she'd let the king down. And although she'd had no training to be queen, she seems to have fulfilled this or to have filled the role excellently. So what I really wanted to do was to try to get behind the dry-as-dust government records and see what sort of a person Elizabeth Woodville really was, to try to bring her to life as far as I could. I hope that if she were to come back now, she would recognise herself in what I've written. That, at least, has been my plan throughout. Three fascinating women. I hope you enjoy the new book.